In this video, we're going to look at particle movement and graphs. Uh, we always want to identify what the graph is first. This is a graph of velocity, so it's very important to think about velocity. Now, this particular graph is an altered 2012 number 3 from the AP exam for your response questions. And notice what we have are some geometric shapes. We have a couple of triangles and a semicircle. So we're going to make use of this picture to help us answer questions. So let's start with number one, and we want to know the interval where the particle is traveling to the left. Well, particle will travel to the left when velocity is negative. So let's look at where on this picture is the graph below the t-axis. In this case, we would have from 4 to 8, and then from 8 to 12. So 4 to 8, union 8 to 12, is when the particle is traveling to the left because velocity is negative. Particle is going to travel to the right when velocity is positive. That would be the portion of the graph above the x-axis. So that would be from 0 to 4 because velocity is positive. Now I'm going to skip 3 and 4 for a minute. And I'm going to skip down to 5. And I want to know when has the particle stopped. Well, the particle stops when velocity is equal to 0. And we can see that the particle is equal to 0 at 0, 4, and 8. So time 0, 4, and 8 would be when the particle has stopped. Let's take a look at speeding up and slowing down. So a particle is going to speed up when velocity and acceleration have the same sign. Particle is going to slow down when velocity and acceleration have different signs. Well, so let's start by looking at velocity. And we've already figured out uh, where velocity is negative and positive. It's negative from 4 to 8 and 8 to 12 in number 1, and positive from 0 to 4 in number 2. So I'm going to start looking for places on this graph where the slope of the graph is the same as the value at the graph. So let's take a look at speeding up. From 0 to 2, we have a positive slope. And velocity is positive from 0 to 4. So acceleration and velocity are the same from 0 to 2. So we know speeding up from 0 to 2 is happening. From 2 to 4, the slope is negative, but the velocity is still positive. So since those two signs are different, we know from 2 to 4, particle is slowing down. Let's continue looking. Uh, from 4 to 6, again, we have negative slopes. But from 4 to 8, we have a negative velocity. So we have two negatives. The signs are the same. So from 4 to 6, again, we're speeding up because velocity and acceleration have the same sign. Slopes from 6 to 8 are positive, but velocity is negative, so we're slowing down from 6 to 8. Finally, if we look at from 8 to 12, we have a negative slope, so acceleration is negative, velocity is negative, so again, we're speeding up from uh, 8 to 12. So the picture is getting a little bit crazy because we've been answering all these questions. I'm going to erase this work and go back to 3 and 4 now. So with 3 and 4, we're talking total distance and net distance traveled. Well, remember, to go from velocity to position, we need to integrate. So what we're looking at is the area under the curve from 0 to 4, the area under the curve from 4 to 8, and the area under the curve from 8 to 12. And we're going to use geometric formulas to help us do that. So let's start by doing area under the curve from 0 to 4. 
Well, from 0 to 4 of V of T dt, that's a triangle. Triangle is going to be half of the base times the height. Our base is 4. Our height is 4. So that would be an area of 8. It's a positive area because it's above the x-axis. Our next area is going to be from 4 to 8 of velocity. And that's a semicircle. So a semicircle is going to be half times pi times r squared. Well, our radius length is 2. So that's going to give us a 2 pi. But we're going to have negative area because the semicircle is below, in this case, the t-axis. We refer to it as the x-axis frequently, but it's the t-axis in this case. Our third area is going to be from 8 to 12 of velocity dt. Again, that's going to be a triangle. So we're going to go half of the base, which is 4, times the height which is 2. So that's going to give us 4, but it's going to be negative area again because we're below the x-axis. So total distance is the absolute value of all of those values. So we're going to need to add 8 plus 4 plus 2 pi, or 12 plus 2 pi as our total distance. Our net distance we're going to leave the values alone. So we have 8 and a negative 4 and a negative 2 pi, which would give us 4 minus 2 pi. I hope this helps.